um, questions about your scientific work and your career. Um, maybe just to start with, I mean, you've had a lot of done a lot of work, but what of this work are you most proud of? What everything you've done, what what would you say was really a, really a great success? Uh, I suppose the, the obvious answer is uh, being able to solve the optimal income tax problem, which means uh, finding a really a numerical technique for, for calculating uh, income tax schedules that are in some sense ideal, let's say, relative to a well-specified uh, sort of uh, uh, criteria um, uh, for what could be reasonably realistic models of the economy. So I was pleased about that. Uh, it's not actually the that I'm most pleased with because uh, I, I remember a, a relatively minor paper that three of us wrote mm -hmm. that, uh, which was in a, in a rather technical area of what you do when there are economies of scale and, and how that mm -hmm. should influence investment planning and when you should get in and build a new power station something like that. So it sounds like a big issue. And uh, the, uh, there, it was quite easy to get the wrong answer because the, the obvious conditions had several solutions. And uh, I spotted the problem and got it right. Uh, that, that was a, a bit tricky. It was, kind of thing that afterwards you think we could have got the So I was more pleased with that. It's certainly a harder mathematical problem. Uh, but on the other hand, I'm pleased with the income tax because I think that's somehow a, a, a bigger economic issue. And mm. um, uh, yeah, of course, you're, you're very, very famous for this work on the tax sector. And currently there's a big debate going on about tax invasion uh, from the US and also from Europe coming, how, what could be the, the best way to make sure that everybody pays it taxes, because I think some tax systems are constructed in a way that people feel that maybe they should look for the best legal way to avoid that system. I mean, we in Switzerland, we, all, we I think we prefer flat tax or something, but it's very hard to get this through on, on a political level in other states. So how do you see the current debate about this tax question that everybody should be tested with, taxed with all possible uh, methods to get the money to the state? Yeah. The, uh, it, it seemed to me that when people said let's have a flat tax, they were usually meaning let's have a low tax. And uh, in some sense that it, it doesn't make any particular sense to do that unless you can somehow show that you don't need that there are no good reasons to use so much tax revenue. Uh, so, so in other words that, that's got nothing to do with whether people are going to be able to escape the taxes easily. But there's, there's no particular reason why having a, a single income tax rate would somehow reduce the amount of evasion and avoidance and somehow magically increase the revenue you can get. Uh, I'm not saying that there isn't truth in the claim that uh, starting from very high tax rates on the top incomes and reducing these high tax rates, that that would be expected to increase total tax revenue rather than reduce it. It, it can happen. It may have happened in America at the point when they came down from tax rates over 90% to something a bit lower and uh, of course this is all very exciting in France because uh, the announcement of 70% which is an effective tax rate including sales tax and uh, rent tax and so on of, uh, probably over 80% uh, leads a number of big names to leave the, the tax jurisdiction so uh, uh, in, in a sense that you could say that oh, it's encouraging tax avoidance. Or you could say it's taxing immigration. 
uh, which is clearly legitimate. But there's a dimension of labor supply, analogous to deciding to retire that way, which is the other kind of thing. What I do from time to time is deciding that I'm not going to do a lecture because they haven't offered enough money. It's not <laughs> These dimensions really, really exist. And I think they, they are probably more important. I still believe a lot more important than actual evasion. On the other hand, of course, a lot of the evasion would be focused through Switzerland. Mm -hmm. I understand why Switzerland is particularly sensitive, and other countries that blame Switzerland. Mm -hmm. Can I ask you two questions? Uh, which do you think is the, the biggest problem now? The fact that the government all around the world, especially in Europe, for example, is trying to get for more money from taxation, for example, in a better way or in a higher level of taxation, or the fact that the government sometimes doesn't administrate proper, properly the money got from the population by taxation? Or from the uh, economic agents, because I, I am from an Eastern country, from Europe, in Romania. So the government all the time is fighting with fiscal evasion. And they are fighting every day, but the efficiency, finally, is not very obvious. Uh, and uh, you're talking now of the, the efficiency of government expenditure. Yeah. Not in pursuing yeah. taxpayers, but, but maybe in uh, building hospitals. Or yeah. Persuading teachers to turn up at school. Yeah. So, so there are yes, the public there are yes. uh, I, I sometimes think that, that people can be a, a bit unfair to, to governments about this because uh, governments are having to deal with some of the areas where it's hardest to achieve real e efficiency. But uh, the, the fact that the, the government doesn't. Uh, we call a profit constraint, uh, that, they, that they have to make a profit. And, uh, have a, do they have an incentive to make as much profit as possible? This is what cuts costs. And, so uh, and also famously, of course, leads to shoddy products. Uh, the, there's a kind of trade-off, what do you want? Uh, this, this, as I understand, it varies a lot from country to country. We have an audit office in Britain. And they have an audit, a system of auditors in the European Union. Uh, the audit office looks at particular areas of government spending from time to time and uh, tries to assess whether they are well done. And I think they do a very good job. Rather few people doing that. And I think that's to be recommended. But I also observe that in Europe, normally the auditors of the, the, the accounts more or less refuse to approve them because they say there are lots of ways in which uh, they have been badly used and people have been cheated. And Parliament says, so uh, there it is, nothing to do about that. So, uh, so that's not a very good example. And having an audit office doesn't necessarily get the improvements, but uh, just will have a long term effect because. One of the reasons why uh, in many countries the European mm -hmm. Union is becoming a bit unpopular, mm -hmm. I'm very concerned about that in the British case, is because of the evidence of inefficient spending, corrupt. Yeah. It's spending. also the German position at the European level, more mm -hmm. discipline at the fiscal level. Yeah, but there, there thinking just that they, they, they want to force governments to cut spending yeah. or, or, or perhaps to increase taxation. Or the, the, yes. uh, even in circumstances like now, when more spending is needed in order to get the economy moving. Uh, and of course, they use the argument that it's all, all, all very 
and efficient. And the, I can understand that they look at Greece and see Greece as far too many civil servants. And uh, maybe Romania is an example yes, yes. Of, of that too. Indeed. So yes, of course, indeed. very, very good idea, no doubt, to, to find ways of getting rid of the unnecessary but do you know civil what servants. But look at the unemployment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but do you know what happened in Romania in the crisis? At the beginning, the government uh, decided to cut off the salaries by 25%, uh -huh. just by night. Yes. Everybody got mad. And then they decided to increase the, the, value, the value, added value taxation uh, from 19 to 24, in the same period. And then they changed the government and the, the left wings uh, decided to, to cut the investments because they said we have, the, we have to give back the salaries to the people. But they cut the, the investments money you know, from the budget. Yep. So we did everything that any country did but almost in the same time. <laughs> cutting, cutting, cutting yep, investments, yep, yep, cutting yep, salaries, yep, 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 austerity measures. So the situation in the country now is not very nice. No. Because Your roads will begin to fall to pieces. Yeah. You won't do. You won't repair roads. Yeah. Um, power stations will. Yes, we are waiting for the European funds, but they yeah. are not coming by themselves, unfortunately. You have to apply the conditions. Projects. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, and these conditions reflect Germany's wish that everybody cuts yeah. spending, which is just saying that what they care about is the, the fiscal standing of the countries. Trying to, to reduce the chance of default as much as possible, and uh, not concerned about this other real aspect, which is the, you know, the unemployment, the, yeah. in, the quick impoverishment. Uh, and I'm sure people's incomes do have to and people, fall. People are but wondering where are we going, and yeah, uh, that's right. We see no good results from it. Yeah. But, um, uh, what, what is the point of, of cutting up? Yeah, and it, which is the solution? The finally. results are, are worse than, than they were before. So yeah, this is some things need done, yeah. but not now. Not okay. now. What would you advise to do at the moment? Um, uh, of course, you can start thinking about uh, how, how you change things, but. Uh, But it is difficult to give the advice without saying who it's to. And actually, if you're asking, uh, what should the Romanian government yeah, do? Please. Then I no, think that's no, very difficult because uh, you're in quite a tight bind. Uh, I think it may be worth thinking of a really radical answer. Which I, I would think would be to yeah. uh, get out of the euro. Really, this is uh, this is what you think it would be better for Romania now. Perhaps to default. Um, I'm not, I, don't know. I think that would at least in the short run be well. better. Uh, now there's no why, question why? that well. So in order that uh, it would be possible to to do some of these things like. Uh, spending more on, on roads or, or whatever, uh, or managing with less tax revenue, because you could print money to, to do it. You can't do that at the moment, because uh, the money supply is controlled by the central bank. Uh, and the other is that uh, you can, uh, it's a much better way of adjusting the cost of labor. Yeah. Is by devaluing rather than by reducing wages within the country. You reduce wages like this for civil servants, it just reduces demand, which uh, causes still more unemployment. Whereas if you devalue and at the same time you are able to expand demand, then, uh, then you can increase employment. But, so, uh, but I, I have difficulty in thinking of of things that you can do within the straight jacket. So of the, it could, it of could the be an economic Euro solution uh, with, uh, with no, a political solution for an economical problem, right? Because it would be a political well, decision told, today. The, the Euro is a political issue, yeah. yes. There are some countries which... But of course, understand the cost of, the, of having the Euro. It's very considerable for... 
There are some, some countries which face the question of maybe to leave the Eurozone, for example, yeah. Greece or so.